What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and you know over the years I have talked about some of the most expensive water cooling parts that you can buy. I've even done a, a guide back in 2013 that was like the $800 loop, which is actually pretty cheap by today's standards, but I digress. You know what I've never actually talked about is some of the cheapest water cooling stuff that you can buy, and that's why today we're gonna take a look at a water block that I bought off Amazon for $17.99. It's $19.99 now, went up two bucks since, uh, since I got it, but look at this. We're gonna talk about whether or not a super cheap water block for 19 bucks can actually handle something like an 8700K. Today's video is brought to you by Precision Camera and Video and their new YouTube video kits. Step up your online presence with these hand-picked kits tailored specifically for various price points which include everything you need to get started in video creation. Right now, if you use promo code jace 2 cents at checkout, you get an extra Hoodman 32 gig steel card with the purchase of any kit. For all your camera and video needs, head to precision-video.com. Water blocks are one of those things where a lot of science has gone into them lately with things like micro channels and flow plates and jet plates and this and that. Uh, I think what that is all about is just trying to make sure you get an even flow of water over the plate. But there's only one thing contacting the CPU heat spreader, and that's obviously the base. And as you can see on this one here, uh, it's definitely made in China, no doubt about it. This is uh, just a cover that's on it right there. It's not exactly the prettiest looking copper, but it's pretty smooth. Let's take a look at the inside here. It's got, of course, it's gonna have an O-ring, has to have an O-ring. But what's interesting about this block is the fact that it has integrated Intel and AMD bracket on it. Okay, so here's what it looks like right here. It's pretty basic. You've got your base, you've got your plate right here, which interestingly enough, uh, the, the micro channels here look like they're milled very well, but they, uh, they're milled into the plate. Instead of some plates which are raised higher, and then they mill down the outsides and do the micro channels so that the micro channels are actually raised, this has to go down through the plate and back out. So it's a little bit different than say something like your EK water block. We've got an O-ring right here, which has a hair in it, that's weird. The long blonde hair, okay, whatever. So yeah, but it's got a channel that it fits in right here. Here's the palm, I think this is palm, like a palm material, I doubt it's an acetal, I guess it could be. But you can see it sort of forces the flow. There's not a labeled inlet and outlet, because as you can see, it's just a square. The flow is identical, it's symmetrical. So that is, the, that is the engineering behind this block. Now let's talk about why I had these motherboards laid out here. And although this looks like an ASUS sponsored video, I swear it's not. It's just the only motherboards I have for Z370, which is what my 8700K obviously needs. But um, I wanted to talk about compatibility with motherboards because they have all the prongs mounting for AM3. This is not AM4 compatible, by the way. So if you guys are running Ryzen, sorry. But uh, AM3 plus and backwards, and Intel, all pretty much all the Intel LGA 775 and up sockets are going to be supported. The issue is because it sticks out so far, I was concerned about it impacting with various things. So taking a look at our Strix Z370 right here, you can see we have no problems. We don't impact on the heatsink there or there. Flip it around the other way if you want to do a horizontal. It again doesn't impact with anything and it's sitting on the CPU. It's not touching any of the chokes, so we're good. Now, if we move on over here to the Maximus X Apex board, you can see uh, we got the cover on there. But as you can see, we do start to impact right here. So we technically might be able to fit. Nope, that doesn't fit that way. So if we turn it this way, we actually can mount it. We actually will, in, will be fine like that. Although, once we take the cover off right here, I might as well do that now. But yeah, with the CPU in place, we still clear just fine. So the only way that the block can mount on this guy is with the, and that's really close, actually. It might even be slightly crooked because it impacts right there on that heat sink. So you're gonna have to mount this one vertical with the fittings on top of each other. You're not gonna be able to do it this way because as you can see, it impacts there. Now that's not to say you can't just take a Dremel and hack it off. Well, it looks like we have to use the Strix board after all because once we get the posts in place, right, they, it centers itself no matter what, based on where it's gonna go, right? We can't move it along this rail, but it is impacting right there. Like, I mean, we're talking like a half a millimeter. I could bust up my file and file that and make it fit no problem. You wanna be able to see that once it's installed. And if we cared about it that much, we could flatten out all the other four so it matches, but it's a $20 water block. 
What do you expect? Ha ha! Modified. See, I can't mod stuff. He's a file. Something else I just noticed too, and some of you might have noticed when I was showing it earlier, is if you turn it this way, these tabs overhang onto the memory sticks. So you're probably gonna be hacksawing and dremeling stuff anyway, so just expect that an all-in-one fit like this is going to require some level of modification. This is supposed to be just a stupid block review, not a, <laughs> all these tools and shit. What is it open? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I never mounted this down because I was like, I don't want it to always be mounted to the table. So that's why I never ended up using it. I think that this is a very accurate representation though of what a buyer will be going through. Mm -hmm. So that's why this stuff is always left in. Do as I say, not as I do. I don't have any safety glasses here, so I have to do it this way. The most important part. <laughs> I expect nothing more for a $20 block. But all the times you've always recommended Sharpie. It was like, we should just Sharpie. I'm like, no! <laughs> this must be a proud moment for you. This is, that's what I'm putting in. <laughs> it looks like a crab. We've got the EK Supremacy block on here, which is like my go-to block, and it has been for a while now. And we've been running Ada 64 trial version because my key expired, apparently. But as you can see, we actually haven't been climbing at all. Now, we've got a 360 millimeter radiator on here, which is a lot for a single CPU. 8700K runs hot, and we are overclocking it to 4.9 gigahertz. And uh, as you can see, these are the temps and where they've equalized. So this is max right here, ADC, 79, 81, 81, 77, 79. Now ADC is 25 Celsius away from thermal junction max. So what that tells us is we have quite a bit of headroom, obviously. Um, what's interesting though is it, it freaked out at some point because we've been letting this run long enough looking for temperature fluctuations or, or a stabilization of temps. And as you can see, we've achieved that. But look at it. it, at some point decided it had been running for one point, well, just, just under 1.2 million hours. I'm from the future. But, hey, can't say I didn't run it long enough. I'm going to go ahead and install this little guy. One other thing worth pointing out too is the fan profile on this is set to turbo and PWM. So we do have the 360 uh, radiators with three fans on there. Not, they're, they're not set to silent by any means. So every now and then I have a video and I'm like, this will be easy. Piece of cake, easy video, get it done. I should get home in time for dinner for once. And uh, you know, inevitably what happens, the same as every single time. So what I learned is when I was like, I'm just gonna use the same standoffs and stuff as the EK block, is EK blocks hang down below their bracket a little bit more than, these, than this guy does. So once it came down and hit that, the plate didn't push down against the CPU. And as I said at the beginning of this video, I lost the hardware that came with this. So now here I am having to fashion my own mounting mechanism. Fortunately though, because it's Intel, it's pretty easy. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm taking these, I think these are 6 32nd screw right here. So what I'm doing is I'm just threading them through the back plate for the EK Supremacy block for the Intel uh, socket sets and this is gonna push up through the motherboard, which I can then take the spring-loaded retentions because the springs and the caps are also 632nd, which is extremely common in the PC realm. Usually M3 for metric or 632nd for standard are what you're gonna find. So I'm now making my own backplate. So there's no doubt that this is a pretty block, but you know what, I actually really like the look of this one too with the, the four silver screws on there with the hardware that we kind of jimmy rigged together ourselves. So anyway, you know what we gotta do now? These are our initial temps right here. Looks like we're in the low 30s to mid 30s at idle, which is pretty much identical to what we were seeing uh, with the EK block. 4.9 gigahertz still, all identical settings, all voltage, same thermal paste, same fan, same setup, same everything. So you know the routine. We're gonna start the test. We're gonna let it run for a while and see what happens. Would you see the initial temperatures though? Not bad, the second it starts up. What happens when we let it take a little while? 
All right, just like before, you can see we're not having any steady temperature climb from the moment we started the test moving forward now, 11 minutes in, there's no climb. In fact, it started to, started to decline a little right there. If we look at our temperatures from left to right, we've got an 82, 81, 83, 82, 79, and 79. If we compare that to before, it's an average of two to three C higher per core, except for the last core, it's exactly the same. Two to three C difference. If you look right here, look, this is the distance of TJ Maxx. That's how much more we would have to rise before we actually start to thermal throttle. Now remember, these are peaks. Those are max temperatures. That means for a split second, it might have hit that temp and come back depending on the test that's being done. We are stressing CPU, FPU, and cache. So this right here is more demanding and more taxing on a CPU than just about any process you could give it doing normal workflows and day-to-day -day work. So it's gonna be a lot lower when you're doing your normal workflow than something like this. But look at the actual real-time temperatures. We're sitting in the 60s to the 70s, dropping down to the 50s on a $19 water block from Amazon. Obviously, if we were running stock speeds, it would be much lower into the 40s and 50s. I'm not gonna bother even doing that test because this shows you what the worst case scenario would be. Aesthetically, I think it looks pretty damn good given the price. Build quality, it's not leaking. I mean, as long as that O-ring doesn't disintegrate by any means. I still don't know what the red O-ring is made out of. If you know, put it in the comments below. But guys, I think there's no doubt about it. The takeaway from this is when you're buying water blocks, yeah, there's a lot of technology and stuff that goes into them. But you know, I think it, it really comes down to maybe just buying the block that aesthetically meets your build more so than thinking one brand is superior to another because really, like I said, they're chasing, they're chasing tenths of a C now. Anyway, links to this block are gonna be down in the description below. Like I said, 19 bucks on Amazon, you can't beat it. And the reason why I have this block is I am putting together the cheapest possible loop that I can using old school methods from like Home Depot and old radiator cores from cars and stuff to try and do it the old fashioned way. And the only piece I was planning on buying instead of trying to make from scratch is a water block. So I got this one for 19 bucks but stay tuned for that video. Anyway, like I said, link down below. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Man, that was, I should just leave it on there. <laughs>